Hey everybody, welcome back uh, to another Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK discussion. Um, so, it's important to organize what you're doing when you're creating scenery or creating an aircraft or whatever it is. And that's what this video kind of talks about in a way because of an issue, all right? First of all, let me make some uh, uh, general comments about my the environment here. Uh, you might hear some fan noises in the background. It's a little humid today, and our air conditioner is running, and I got my cooling pad on my, my laptop running, so you might hear some fans in the background, and I apologize for that. Uh, plus, you might hear my cat scratching at the door to get into the room. <laughs> but um, anyway... I digress. Uh, experienced creators, you might already know this, and I apologize for the redundancy, but I don't see anybody talking about this on in videos, uh, so that's why I decided to make one. But anyway, I am working on Cleveland Hopkins Airport in Cleveland, Ohio, KCLE which will be free at flightsim.to. Um, and I was almost done with my version one, almost done. I mean, probably within just a few days of uploading version one. Um, I failed to organize. I got complacent, got lazy, and didn't really it's kind of almost shameful to talk about it, but we've all been there, I'm sure. But I just went in and just created a simple scenery using the airport, uh, using simple scenery and adding this and that and the other thing and didn't name things as I was, I was creating them. I was being really, really sloppy. So if you guys ever wonder why you guys are getting crashed to desktops, CTDs, well, I would have caused one for you. Um, scenery designers, mod makers, whatever, when they get lazy, like I did, um, you can have you can have adverse effects on other people using the simulator. Um, other reasons for crashes is uh, making modifications to your system that aren't consistent. Okay, Microsoft Flight Simulator and Asobo have created a fantastic product. Uh, it's second to none, to be honest with you. The simulator world has been around for 40 years, okay? Crashes, they happen, folks. They do happen. But the crashes that I'm seeing all over the internet on, on groups and things, it has nothing, a lot of them have nothing to do with Microsoft Flight Simulator or a Sobo, okay? They deal with uh, mod makers like myself, Create, uh, scenery creators, aircraft creators, instrument, you name it. Any modification, if it, if it has a little bit of laziness in its creation, it can cause the crash, okay? If you're making tweaks to your computer that just, just make it sloppy, it's going to crash. Microsoft Flight Simulator is stable, okay? So, anyway, I'm going to talk about my laziness and how to, how to correct that laziness. And a lot of you may not even know you can do this with the XML layouts um, in, in the SDK, okay? Flight simulator scenery and mods are strongly, are strongly dependent on XML in their creation. It's really the brains behind the creation, all right? Yeah, we have a fantastic graphic, uh, graphic 
uh, user interface to create our scenery and our mods and stuff. But really, it's the XMLs behind the scenes that are really the brains of it all. Okay, so let's quickly, if I can, and I apologize if I drone on, forgive me. Let's talk about the situation that I created. All right. So you are looking at the uh, the revised version of my airport. I'm basically starting over. All right. But the XMLs allow me to not have to redo all of the, the monotonous, mundane creation of a lot of the features because the XML has the data in it. So if you messed up something, don't delete your original project. Keep it because those XMLs are a wealth of information that you do not have to recreate something, okay? So here we are looking at Cleveland Hopkins, second attempt. And you notice that I have taxiways. I have taxiway points. Taxiway points are the nodes, okay? Taxiway paths are the connections between the points, okay? I have parking spaces. I gotta collect, see if I can, yeah, parking spaces. And I have uh, links from parking spaces to the taxiways, okay? So you got taxiway points, taxiway pads, taxiway parking, and taxiway, okay, try this again, taxiway pads, type parking. Got that? Type parking, okay? Because you have taxiway pads, type taxi, which is the actual taxiways, okay? And taxiway paths type parking, which is a line between a taxiway point and your actual taxiway parking. Got that? All right. You need to understand that because the XML will tell you exactly what you're looking at. All right, so anyway, I started fresh, completely brand new um, naming convention, uh, SDK directory structure. Uh, I, I basically said, uh, I can't do this as a simple, I can't do this as simple scenery anymore. I gotta do it how it's supposed to be, right? Or how it should be. Don't be lazy. Okay, so I created my, my, my structure, okay, I created the structure uh, using the right SDK uh, methodology, but I didn't want to re-digitize all my lines. I did not want to redo all of this. What a pain. I did not want to redo all the parking. I just was just sitting there stabbing myself with the spoon saying, I don't want to have to do all this again. Then I was going, wait a minute. The XML has everything that I need. I just need to pluck out and insert and test each step to, to make sure I find my, that I stay away from the error that created the messiness in the first place, okay? So, let's look at the XML. I'm using Notepad++. My original XML was this Objects XML. Not a good naming convention, by the way. Okay? In my new project, the XML is the name of the airport with uh, SCN as identifier for the scene. Okay? Nice and clean identifies exactly what I'm looking at. Objects is ambiguous. It means anything, right? But looking at the XML, 
I'm not going to go through the entire XML. I'm going to concentrate on the taxiways for right now and points and parking. But if you look at the XML for your objects XML or your scene XML, it has everything you've put into that scenery in the XML. Okay. It has what it is. It has where it is. Uh, not in this particular case. Actually, it's somewhere. Oh, it's down the line here. Um, not, yeah, yeah, there it is right there, right there. Long lat, okay, latitude and longitude. It has the geography of where that object is and its orientation, okay? It has all the geography for that particular object, okay? Now, we're dealing with taxiways, so I'm going to come down here. Remember, taxiways are made up of points and links between those two, uh, links between the points. The point is a simple XY coordinate, latitude and longitude, okay? Actually, this is YX. Latitude is Y, X, uh, longitude is X, okay? But it's an XY coordinate in space. Plus, it has a type normal, uh, a stop short, uh, sh uh, hold short, whatever, okay? But a taxiway is made up of points and links between the points, all right? Each point has an identifier, which is the index. So if you look here, we have point zero, which is the first point I added, always starts with zero. And, point, and index three is the fourth point that I added as I was digitizing, okay? So if you know that index is this identification number, you, you, you just, you have a wealth of information there, right there, just with that one number. Now, this taxiway point or groups of points have links between them to create the actual line between the points. That is called a taxiway path. So let's, there's thousands of points, so let's uh, kind of scroll down until I get to path. We'll talk about taxi name here in a second. But taxiway path, all it is, is a link between two points. Okay? So, Let's take this first one, which is um, taxiway path 201. It has, ID, I, uh, it has a unique identifier. It's type parking. So that tells me that it's a link between a taxiway and a parking spot. Okay, right off the bat. Uh, don't worry about surface. This is, the, this is the, the texture that's being used. This is its GUI. Uh, GUID uh, for that particular text, uh, texture, but I want you to see the start and the end, okay? The start is a point. It's a taxiway point. The end is a parking space, okay? A parking space, all right? Now, if it's not a parking space, well, uh, I don't want to confuse it. Here we're talking about parking space. I'll talk about a type taxi here in a second. So this taxiway path type parking tells me that it starts from taxiway point 2113 and it ends at parking space not the name of the parking space, but the identification number of the parking space, 2304, okay? Now, let's move down here to type taxi, okay? Taxiway path, this is a uh, type taxi, is a line between two taxi points along a taxiway, all right? And it starts at point 1791 and ends at 1792 which makes sense because as I was digitizing 
I added this point and this point, so they're sequential as I'm adding. Now, if I went over here and added a point way up here out of order, then this number would be different. But I was digitizing points. Here I clicked 1791, 1792, 1793, and so forth, right? So this path links these points together to create a path. So I had to know this, all right? So also I have all those taxiways, each has a name, okay? Taxiway A, B, E1, H, J1, K1, or uh, Kilo 1, Lima 1, okay? Mike. Mike one, Mike two, blah, blah, blah. You guys understand the taxiway names, right? But anyway, when you name your taxiways, it creates these taxi name tags. All right. So in order for me to reconstruct all my taxiways, I needed to know this information. I needed the taxiway points, type taxi. I needed the taxi name and I needed the taxiway path type taxi, okay? Just to create the taxiways, not worried about parking yet. So what I did was I found everything that had taxiway point, regardless of its type, okay? Regardless of its type, I didn't care about the, uh, the type of the point that, that that I'm not worried about that right now, but I wanted all my taxiway points, needed them all, but I only wanted taxiway path type taxi, okay? So I cut, I copied that all those lines out of the XML in my objects XML, and I pasted them where they're supposed to be in the airport tag, which is up at the top, airport tag, then the taxiway points come first. And this is all alphabetical order, by the way. Um, it, it, you can really kind of put them anywhere, but just to be consistent. Um, but they have to be in the airport tag itself. So I got my points. I got my, don't worry about the parking got the taxiway names and I got my taxiway paths, but they all had to be relative to the taxis. Okay. Now I got parking in here, but I'll talk about that in a second. Okay. So all, I only had type taxi. I copied those into my new XML. Then I w loaded up the project and built it. And I, all my taxiways showed up in my new project. I didn't have to digitin, digitize them by hand. All right, the next step was to do the parking. All right, in order to have the parking, I needed the parking space and I needed to know which, which paths had type parking, okay? Because type parking paths link a point along the taxiway to the actual taxi parking, okay? So I go into the XML and I find all of the type parking, all right? So I know where those are in the XML, okay? The other thing about the parking is we're gonna come down here to parking. Oops, parking's up here. It's in alphabetical order. Parking has different types. Ramp GA, ramp parking, has no dependency other than the latitude and longitude of the point, okay? And it's heading which direction it faces, okay? Taxi par taxiway parking type gate has a dependency. It has to have a SIM object associated with it, 
All right, so I didn't want to get complicated bringing all this stuff in. So I only wanted my ramp GAs parking, okay? Because I didn't want to have to bring in my, ta my jetways yet, okay? A jetway is a sim object, all right? So I, all I did was I selected all the taxiway parking that had a type of ramp, okay? And my taxiway paths, I needed to bring in only the ones that were type parking because I already had the type taxis all in. So I selected all of the type parkings, okay, and all of and only the parkings that were type ramp. So I selected all those in my XML, in my objects, copied those, and then pasted them into my new XML. Then I went into the editor, opened the project, built the project, and then all of these parking spaces with their links showed up just fine, okay? And then brought it into put it in my community folder, opened up the, the Microsoft Flight Simulator, and tested it, okay? And ATC, you know, I parked my airplane there. ATC knew exactly where it was. It, uh, I told it I wanted to depart to the south, and it created a path coming down this line and over to the, the runway that I, that I was going to leave on, so it worked, okay? Now, for the big one. And that was to bring in the taxi, the, the park, the taxiway parking that was type gate. Okay? Taxiway type gate, taxiway parking type gate needs to have a sim object associated with it. And that's where these jetways come into come into play. Notice the green dotted line right here. Okay, this jetway is associated with this taxiway parking. Okay, in order for this to be brought in, you have to bring in the sim objects as well. Okay, this was the, this was the nervous part of reconstructing the airport. All right, but don't worry about it because you're still, you're bringing things in one at a time, testing them, making sure they work. Okay, so where do you find this in the XML? Okay, so in my objects XML, basically I, now I can select all my parking type, uh, all my path type parking, uh, that's actually type path came in with the, lat, with the, uh, the previous update, but I wanted to bring in taxiway parking type gate because that had a dependency. So in order to bring this in, I also had to find all those jetways, okay? So let's look at taxiway parking, type gate, and look at the XML. It has a group identifier, it has an index identifier. The group identifier is the actual taxiway parking um, path ID but the index is the actual parking space number, okay? And it has a latitude and longitude, and it has a heading just like the other, uh, the medium did, uh, ramp parking. But you come down to your sim objects down at the bottom, right after runway in your XML, you got the runway tag for each one of your runways. Right after runway, there are jetways, okay? And jetway objects, jetway tags, so we have the opening tag right here and we have the closing tag for a particular jetway, all right? And in that, it has a gate name, which you name when you're adding them, and it has the parking number and all this kind of stuff. 
and it has the geography of that inform of that object. Okay. Okay, so that's all the data that comes with a jetway. Now, if we notice, jetway has a gate name, parking name, uh, parking number, and a suffix if you use it. Okay, don't worry about uh, the actual container because that was just the sim object that I selected from from the library. But this name is associated with that parking space all right so if i go up to my parking space my taxiway parking okay and i look at taxiway parking i have an index number and i have a type okay but if you notice it has a name a number and a suffix. These have to match that jetway. Okay? So jetway is associated with these numbers or these tags. Okay? So the next step was in my original objects XML was to come up to the taxiway parking and only select, because I already had the ramp stuff in, but to select out the gates, medium, and also copy all of these jetways. You know, select the point where you want to start. So let's say I just wanted this jetway here, but I wanted all of them. But let's say I just wanted this one. I would copy here, go over to my new XML, and paste them in their logical order. So if I come down here after runway, you'll see all those jetways that I added in. Okay? And then I save the XML, come into the project, reopen the project, rebuild it, and then test it, okay? And so I was able to build this, put it in my community file, start Microsoft Flight Simulator, and test it. And it works just fine, okay? So the hard part of this airport is done, all right? Or the monotonous part. The second monotonous part is working with like all the aprons. Now that, I think that's where I actually messed up because I didn't name all of my polygons that I was digitizing, okay? I named one. So if I come down to in my original object XML, and again, I'm sorry, this is a boring video. <laughs> but it's it's useful information in my opinion okay so after jetways there's the apron tags and inside the apron tags you got a display name if you don't name it in the editor display name won't be there okay but I have all the polygons that I have in my project or in the old project I only named one. That's the only one I can identify, okay? And that is a polygon I digitized along taxiway L, okay? So I can select this, copy it into this XML, come into my editor, rebuild the project, and I will have taxiway L, which is down here, this long taxiway right here is L, then I would have the polygon in there. Test it, see if it's okay, all right? But in my new version, I'm going to do something. I'm not just going to, you know, copy all these polygons back in. Um, there's some polygons I'm going to actually redo 
make more organized, make sure I put a display name so when I look at the XML, I know exactly what polygon I'm dealing with, okay? So anyway, the, this, this video, I can go, I can bore you some more and talk about the XMLs. I know I've probably bored most of you already, but the XMLs are extremely important if you need to reconstruct things and don't want to have to redigitize things. Get to know these XMLs. Get to know what these tags mean, okay? So anyway, uh, I'm reconstructing my Cleveland Hopkins Airport. Um, I'm going to be redoing my aprons now. And then after I get the airport, and, and here's, the, here's the thing, one of the sloppy things that I did wrong was I have all the buildings. I have all of the buildings uh, for the airport ready to add in. To the scenery well what i did was i created my airport and then i created the polygon and then i started putting my buildings in before i started doing my taxiways and all my all my aprons very sloppy when you're doing your airport do the airport infrastructure first taxiways runways taxiway signs, get all that done first. Then start doing your texturing. You know, adding in uh, the texture paints, uh, you know, the line painting, get all that done first. The last thing that you should start working on in your scenery is adding in your objects, your buildings, okay? So, Think about organization, don't get sloppy like I did, because if you get sloppy, you're gonna create crashes for the users of the simulator, all right? So I hope this video helps. Um, we can discuss more in the comments, and I do invite you to. Uh, you can even thumb down that I'm boring, but I, I, forgive me, I'm trying not to be boring, but this is important stuff to understand. So, um, like and share the video. Please subscribe as, as always. If you don't want to subscribe, I understand. And I also have a Facebook page for scenery creators. It's called Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 SDK and Scenery. Please come and join uh, that Facebook group and we can discuss anything and it's your space that is your page that I created for you creators to promote your stuff you can I don't care if you're your if it's payware free freeware it doesn't matter that's your space to discuss your scenery to to boast your product I don't care uh, just be kind friendly have a have a have fun we can make fun of each other it doesn't matter as long as we're kind but it's your space so microsoft flight simulator 2020 sdk and scenery facebook group come join us uh anyway you guys have a great day and we'll see you in the comments and we will see you later